All right, so the problem that we're gonna think about right now is we're gonna let fi uh, be um, ways to tile a two by i plate with two by one Lego. So the pieces that we have, we can have two orientations for our Lego. So we can have a brick that's oriented like this, and you can see these are the warm pallets that I have here. Um, or we can use bricks that look like this. Okay, and one thing that we're trying to understand is we wanna have a sense of what is the size of fi, well, fi, which maybe we can denote by the function f of i. So we're trying to understand, can we get a sense of what this function is? Can we understand it in some way? Can we give a formula for it? That would be the best answer, but first let's figure out how to understand it by doing some examples. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with a two by one plate. So maybe we'll record our, our data. So if we have a two by one plate, how many ways can we do this? Well, we have to take um, a vertically oriented brick and stack it. There's no other way to do it, so we get one answer. Okay, now let's try if we take a two by two brick, that's gonna give us a little bit more flexibility. So we could take, like before, we could take a vertical, and if we did, then we're gonna have to take another vertical, but we made a choice there. We could make a different choice to start. Instead of taking it vertically oriented, we could take a horizontal brick, and then we can take another horizontal brick, and that, that's it. There's no other ways that we could do it. So the answer here is two. These are the two ways that we could have tiled that. Okay, let's keep going. So next, let's see what happens when we do a two by three. So here's a two by three plate. And now what we wanna ask ourselves is how can we tile this? Well, again, we could start with a horizontal, oh, sorry, vertical. And if we wanted to, we could do another vertical and another vertical. That's one way to tile it, okay? But we, again, we made some choices, so let's, let's do another way. So let's start again vertical. Now, if I, if I make this choice to do vertical again, I'm stuck with vertical again and I've just repeated, so let's not do that. Let's make a different choice. So I can make the choice of doing horizontal and then I've gotta complete it with horizontal. So that's one way I could have done it. But I started with vertical both times. Those are the only two ways I could have started with vertical. Now let's start with horizontal. So in this case, I'll start with a horizontal. Have, again, I've got to complete it to a horizontal. And now I don't have room to do a horizontal again, but I could do a vertical. So maybe we haven't used this color yet. So there's a vertical. These are the three different ways I could have done it here. Okay, and these are, these are different. So I know my answers are one, two, three. So if someone asks you, okay, what's the sequence one, two, three, what term comes next? You should not be lulled into telling them an answer. We need more data. So let's do two by four and see how this goes. Okay, I've got my two by four plate. Again, let's start with that vertical orientation. And now let's just keep going, vertical orientation. And we can always do the all vertical orientation, right? That's something we can do. Okay, it's a rather boring one. Um, let's do another thing. So we'll start off vertical and now we'll stop before we finish, right? And we'll do another vertical. If I do vertical here, right? Then again, I'm forced into this solution, which I've already done. So let's do something different. So I'll do horizontal and I'll do another horizontal. Okay. But maybe there's some other options. Get another plate. Uh, again, vertical. Now, once I do this, you see, I, I, I've exhausted all possibilities here. It's either vertical or horizontal, so there's no point in doing that, but um, I might as well try this and then um, finish it off. And now I've got to do a horizontal here. Okay, what else could we do? So that's it starting with the red, right? There, there's nothing else I could have done because I, I put my vertical, I exhausted that. Now I did the horizontal and then I, I sort of got stuck there. So let's not start off with that. Let's start off with horizontal and horizontal. And now I could do vertical 
and then I'm forced into vertical. Okay, but that's not the only thing I could have done. So let's try again, horizontal, horizontal. And now I, once I pick that vertical, I'm forced here, but I could pick something horizontal again here. So I could pick horizontal and then I've got horizontal. And now that's it, I've, I've exhausted my possibilities. So let's line these guys up. These are my possibilities for two by four. And now at this point you see that, okay, it's not just I, so it's somewhat more interesting. And we could keep going like this, but the point is to, to look a little deeper and try to say, okay, well, if I was gonna do two by five, how would I do it? Well, I'm, I'm doing things systematically as you saw, and um, I don't think they make a two by five Lego plate, so I'm not gonna pull that one out. What I'm gonna do instead is say, well, what do I do first? If I'm gonna do two by five, what do I do first? Well, I either pick vertical or I pick horizontal, okay? That's my first choice. And then what do I do after that? Well, if I picked vertical, then I could pick any of these five options to complete it, right? I take this and then I just append any of these five that I wish. And now I've got all the ways to start with vertical. Because if there was any other way to start with vertical, that would give me another solution to the two by four problem. And similarly, if I start with this horizontal block, I have to complete the whole block. And now, okay, I've got three spaces left, so now I could take any of these three solutions and just append it again. And again, that's exhaustive. So what do I know? Well, I know that two by five, this is actually gonna be my solutions to two by four. So it's all of those solutions, disjoint union with all of my two by three solutions. And now instead of constructing more solutions, I've actually come to some understanding of what's happening with my problem. What I've done is I've figured out a recurrence relation. So that gets me at least a way to compute the numbers a lot faster. I can now do it just from a recurrence relation. So if we write that recurrence relation down, maybe we'll clear space here on the bricks. The recurrence relation that we've discovered is that if I want to know what is the ith thing in terms of the cardinalities, it's f of i minus one. That corresponds to me putting a vertical brick to start as my first brick, a vertical brick, plus f of i minus two, and that corresponds to beginning with really two horizontal bricks. Um, because again, the amount of space that I have left, if I want it to be i, this is i minus one and one, this takes up two spots, and that's why we get i minus two. And now essentially I've given you a, a combinatorial proof of why this recurrence relation holds because we've written it in terms of the sets. So this set of objects can be decomposed into a disjoint union of smaller sets. And that gives me a combinatorial proof of this recurrence, which is a very elegant solution. And then once we have an, a recurrence relation, now we can manipulate something using more sophisticated techniques and combinatorics. And that's what I'll talk about next.